Greetings guys, this is Dograf, and today, another video on the same day, oh my god, I must be on a roll today, and this week, with making videos. I hope you liked the video on the Moon Mayhem video, yeah, the coverage that I did earlier today. But, today, another video for you guys on the M8A1, the Tier 4 American Tank Destroyer. This is an absolutely amazing tank, and the story of the M8A1, for me, starts off yesterday when I bought this tank and I was able uh, to grind down the T67 very quickly and on the same day as well so uh, I got some amazing battles in this tank which enabled me to get the T67 really quickly indeed so what is this tank this tank is a little tank destroyer as I said it is one of the two T4 tank destroyers in the American tech tree that has got a turret as we can see, the turret traverse is really, really slow though, and that's of course due to balancing reasons. Um, why is there balancing needed? Because this gun that this tank gets is just absolutely amazing. It gets, yeah, you get the choice of a few guns on this tank. You can get, I think, a 57mm or a 76mm. I decided to use the 76mm. What are the differences? Well, with this gun, you get uh, 110 millimeters of penetration as well as 110 alpha damage, I think. And on the 57 millimeter, you get less penetration, I think. No, you might as well get the same penetration but a lot less alpha damage, I think. I could be mistaken here, but I decided to mount the 67 millimeter. Why? Because this gun just gives such a more punch when you hit an enemy tank. And that is really important with this tank. Why? This tank hasn't got any armor. So if you, you, you just can't take shots at all, pretty much. You also have got really, really... Yeah, just look at the hit points. You don't have much hit points at all, as you can see. Not much at all. So if you get into a tier 5 matchmaking, there are tanks like the OI Experimental that can one-shot you. And that has happened to me. So it is very important that you try and not get shot. So that's why I have uh, equipped my M8A1 with a camonet and binoculars. And that's why I am in such big favor on this map because there's bushes everywhere. And if I get sides of tier 4 tanks, as we are in a great matchup, I'm just going to slaughter everything, as you can see. This is just an amazing little tank. And it can just decimate the enemy, as you can see. So, why do I like this tank as well? This tank gets really good mobility for a tier 4 tank. Really good mobility. It is really quick. 58 km per hour top speed limit. But I did feel that uh, this tank does not accelerate towards its top speed limit that easily. So it, it's going to take a while for this tank to get towards its top speed limit. But that's not one of the biggest issues. One of the biggest issues as well, due to balancing reasons, I suppose, is that the tank, as you can see, drives really slowly backwards. So if this tank commits to a big fight or a big one versus one fight... It mostly is committed. It has to try and kill the enemy tank because, as you can see, driving backwards isn't just very handy in this tank. It is too slow. But as we've got great camo, yeah, with the camo net and all that stuff, it is very hard for most people in this tier to spot me because most of people in tier 4 don't have good crews. So, now as we can see, Omura Vanka. We have got a 52% roll on our hands here. We're one tank behind at the moment as the enemy Sentinel just killed one of our artillery. And I'm going to pull one back on this T28. Who is not having a good day. Anyway, enemy tank destroyers are up there on the ridge. Which is a really good position for them. Anyway, as we can see there's two directly dangerous tanks. And what do I mean with directly dangerous Two tanks that are not artillery. Of course, the Smarter 38 and the Sentinel are going to be direct threats to me. So, this Smarter 38 is within a one-shot range if I roll average. Because 110 of average damage, 102 health. But of course I don't. And now the slow turret reverse is going to fuck me over a little bit. But it doesn't matter, as I just turn my tank to take out the modder. The Mother, of course, doesn't have a turret, which enabled me to take him down very easily. And, at the same time, one of the enemy artillery gets spotted in the bushes behind me. 
The Sentinel takes down one of her other teammates. And the kill isn't given to me, unfortunately. But it doesn't really matter because we know that there's somebody capping. And it is the Sexton too. I can easily put a shot into him. And I was spotted apparently because uh, behind me a West Bay shoots over the top of my tank. And misses me, luckily. I know that that West Bay is there. But it is important to take down tanks at this stage of the game. Because we were outnumbered. So it is really important to take down tanks. So, now this guy is dead. The Sentinel uh, has been last spotted there. But as he killed somebody who was around here, it is very likely that he's going to rush straight at us. So, what is important for me, I am going to have to kill the West Bay at the moment. The West Bay resets the cap, unfortunately, which is bad for us. I'm going to take a shot here. I wait until my camo net and my binoculars are activated to give myself the highest chance of not getting spotted. And I don't know for sure if I'm spotted right now because I don't have six cents on this tank. Would be very weird if you had six cents after you've just bought a tank. But I take him down. But unfortunately, this enemy sentinel takes down my last remaining teammate. So I am now in a one versus one against the sentinel. Luckily, I do know a lot about the sentinel as a lot of YouTubers did reviews on that tank. So I know that that tank has got 75 millimeters of armor, and I know that I'm going to be able to contest his armor with the gun that I'm using. So I'm going to try and use the bushes to my advantage. He can't see me at the moment. I'm pulling back behind the bush and waiting for my camera net to activate. But it looks like he's spotted. Be yeah, I'm spotted. He's, uh, of course, using Rex as cover. But I know what is going to happen right now. If I try to peek that bush, same bush again, it will not end well for me. Because the Sentinel will just be able to shoot me. And I will not be able to shoot him reliably because he is behind a wreck. So the thing that I need to do now is try and change the angle. I try to, but unfortunately for me the sentinel spots me. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try and trick this guy. He last saw me driving this way and now I'm going to turn around. You have seen me use this trick a lot in recent replays of mine. So I'm now going to drive the other way. And I'm going to try and avoid driving over ridges. To give myself the highest chance of not getting spotted by the sentinel. I'm going to try and go all the way to the left as far as I can. On the ridge where I saw the West Bay and the other artillery camp. So that I can try and use the bushes to my advantage there. Because I will almost be certain that I have side shots on the Sentinel if I come from that corner. So I tried just that. Unluckily there's this ridge here. And it enables the Sentinel to spot me. But luckily I'm in a really good position. I'm going to be held down here and the Sentinel is in the middle of the open. So I'm going to have really easy shots. I auto aim to uh, aim the shot in. I do have premium shots loaded because I would rather not bounce this shot. I also low roll on the sentinel which is unfortunate. So I'm going to have to put another shot into him. I'm panicking, panicking a little bit. Yeah, not really needed because he cannot, he cannot one shot me the sentinel. So it's just a case of slowly targeting his turret and trying to put the final shot in. And that's exactly what I do here and I take the kill. So I've got another replay of the M8A1. This was the best game I had. I think I played even less than 20 games in this little tank. But I do have another good replay that I could show off and probably make a review of. But I wasn't sure if you guys wanted to see me review a tier 4 tank. As I have ever reviewed uh, the Matilda. But that review wasn't received really well. So I thought, okay, I'd rather ask for your guys' opinion. But let's take a look at the post-game statistics. What a good result for the M8A1. Look at the crap load of tokens and medals we got in this game. So, as I said about a minute ago, I want to know uh, about your opinion. If it is worth making a review about a tier 4 tank. Because if it is, the M8A1 certainly is a very good tank to make a review of. But I'm certain that I'll find a tank to make a review of really soon. And until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, as I did put a lot of time in making this video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.